Hey everybody, welcome back to Voral Motors. I'm Meiji Hart, here today with a new guide to discuss our rides. For today's video, we're going to continue our journey that I started about two weeks ago and talk a little bit more nitty and gritty about some scooter parts. We here at Voral Motors have three different kinds of throttles that you can put onto your e-move cruiser or touring. And these are also throttles that you're going to see in general whenever you're shopping for any scooter. So it's good to be kind of versed in what these throttles are and how they work. With that being said, why don't we go ahead and jump right into it and start with the finger throttle. Now the finger throttle is the most common kind of throttle you're going to see. I think looking at it physically would be the best way to start off with some of these pros and cons. So the way that this throttle really works is there's a big hook right here up along the top. And when you walk up to your scooter, your index finger, maybe your top two fingers, are going to be used to pull that throttle down. And it gives it the gas. Now, because this is the most common type of throttle, I think that there's merit in just understanding how this throttle works and getting comfortable with it. You see, because it's the most common, if you're comfortable with it, if you hop on anybody's scooter, you're gonna be able to whip it around no problem. It's a nice one to kind of get used to. I guess it's kind of like knowing how to drive stick but what if everybody drove stick? <laughs> Not to say that this is nearly as difficult as driving a stick shaft. Honestly, the finger throttle is super easy to get a grasp of, and it's honestly maybe one of the easier throttles to use. Because you only use one finger to squeeze that throttle down, you're going to be able to just start maxing this thing out without a second's hesitation. That might be one of the big pros about this throttle, if I'm being honest. It is so easy to keep this thing at max throttle just by keeping that finger locked down and go ahead and squeeze down on your grip. Another thing that's really nice about this is if you have really large hands, you might be able to even use everything on this without ever needing to let go of the throttle. A larger handed rider is going to be able to reach out and grab those brake levers while still holding their hand over the throttle without any problem. It feels really comfortable and natural to just kind of squeeze that throttle down while you're going forward. If anything, if you really start zipping around on this, you'll be dragged back a little bit and it'll make holding that throttle back a little bit easier. Moving in a little bit closer to this throttle, I think what's important to note is that this throttle's whole menu system is actually different than the other two throttles that we offer. Probably the biggest pro about this throttle I can give it is that this menu works totally fine in the sunlight. Because it's black on against a white background, it will kind of dim when you put it in direct sunlight, but it won't erase completely. So no matter how sunny it is, you're always going to be able to read the speedometer and the battery life, which is always important to keep in mind on a scooter when you take it out for those longer runs. You want to make sure you know where you're standing battery life wise. While we're talking about quality of build, it's important to note that this throttle is also pretty waterproof too. No matter what, this throttle is going to be able to face the harsh elements which is really incredible and not something you can necessarily say about every single throttle. Unfortunately, not everything's perfect, and this throttle does have a couple of cons. Much like there's a reason that it's so common on all of our scooters, there's a reason why you can pay for the upgrades. The big reason why I think you may want to upgrade from the finger throttle is that while it is nice to know that you can kind of grab your brake and your throttle at the same time with this tool, you're probably going to need to move that throttle down forward a decent amount before you really feel comfortable using this throttle. I've seen some people that will put this throttle up really high, myself included, and then start riding around, but this throttle feels much more comfortable if you tilt this screen all the way down. But the problem then is it's a lot harder to read the display, see your battery life, and see what speed you're cruising at which can be a real big nuisance if you don't want to start cluttering up that front bar with your phone and things like that. Another big issue that this throttle has over our other two throttles is that the plastic cover on this one is actually more fragile than our other two. So if you have all three of these on a scooter and you end up bailing out or falling on all of them, odds are this is going to be the one that cracks and breaks. Another con is that depending on your hand size, some people have expressed a concern that they have of riding the scooter around and then having to let go of it completely to get their index and middle finger onto the brake to squeeze that down all the way. If that's a concern that you have, then this throttle is not for you because if you're nervous about your brakes, you're gonna be a nervous rider and nobody wants that. Last and finally, this throttle is, of all of our throttles, the most likely to run into a small technical issue. After a good amount of riding it and playing around with it and just, you know, general wear and tear, sometimes the spring inside this can go, rock, go out and it can get a little bit sticky. It's not the end of the world. One of the greatest things about our throttles is that they're plug-in play so you can swap it out. 
But if you plan on taking this thing out for a long, long time and using it, that's an issue that you might run into. It's not common, it's really rare to run into that issue in general, but it is something that can happen. So keep that in mind when you go out and get this throttle. With that being said, those are the big pros and cons for the finger throttle, so why don't we go ahead and jump over to the thumb throttle now. Now the thumb throttle. Really quick, I'll give a quick explanation for it. It's going to be a little throttle that hangs underneath your grip. So if you walk up to it and you grab hold of your handlebar, you'll notice that your thumb can be used to press in this throttle and get going forward without any worry. This is a throttle that lets you grab the entirety of the handlebar and lets your thumb, which is just dangling there anyway, do the real work of propelling the scooter forward. One of the biggest pros that I can give this kind of throttle is that it's super easy to pick up. When you walk up to this scooter and you approach a thumb throttle scooter, it's very apparent what's going on here. Not like the finger throttle that takes a brief second to figure it out. You see a button, you push a button. Simple as that. A lot of people will say that this is the most comfortable throttle for them, which it has a lot of merit. There's not a lot of throttles out there that give you the ability to firmly grasp your entire handlebar and have nothing in the way between you going out and grabbing that brake so you can stop really easily. Now the cons for this throttle are a little bit more nitpicky admittedly. The biggest one being that of all of the three throttles that we have here, the thumb throttle is the most susceptible to bumpage. And by that I mean as you kind of run around down the scooter, hit little bumps, run over a small stick, things like that, you're going to kind of bob forward and back. And of all three throttles, the thumb throttle is the one that you're going to notice your thumb bouncing forward and back with the shakiness of the road. So it can make your acceleration and throttle a little bit jerky and bumpy as you go ahead and hit some of these bumps and grinds and general road debris. The other big asterisk that I need to put on this throttle is that it's really nowhere near as good in the sunlight, which can be a real big frustration if you're riding in sunny areas. But if you're the kind of person that wants to grab hold of the handlebar the entire time and have your thumb as the main accelerator, this is going to be the best one for you. And finally, we have our twist throttle weird holding these double-sided ones. Now our twist throttle is something that's going to be more akin to a motorcycle if you've ever ridden one of those. When you approach the scooter you're going to notice a different form of grip and when you grab that and twist it that's going to be what triggers the acceleration. This is going to be the most bump safe throttle that you can get. There's a reason why a lot of motorsports and motorbikes use this kind of throttle. No matter what you hit and whatever you bump Odds are, if you're holding that throttle back with your wrist, you're not going to notice those little things and you're just going to plow right through it. It's something that I mentioned on a previous video when I installed the twist throttle for the Cruiser for the first time. You can check that out in the description down below. Another really nice thing about this throttle is that no matter what your hand size is, it's going to be a perfect fit for you to just keep on accelerating. If you have your thumb throttle and you have a little bit of a smaller thumb, that can be a real frustration as to where you want to angle that thumb throttle out to get the correct spacing. And if you have a smaller hand in general, using that finger throttle can be frustrating to try to get the brake and the throttle both used with your fingers in total. The twist throttle solves both of those problems. No matter what, so long as you can grab it, you can use the throttle and you'll be able to grab that brake without any problems which is really, really, really convenient. The twist throttle really only has two major downfalls. The first is that because the twist throttle is built in a way that as you twist it back, you'll be accelerating, but because you're gripping it just naturally, you'll probably forget that you're even holding an accelerator, which means that when you let go of it, you will still be accelerating. So you, the cruise control can become a real danger. For that reason, I recommend that if you use the twist throttle, you should deactivate cruise control, which really just means that one of the biggest issues with this is that you need to find out how to operate the menus. The other big issue is that this is your grip. A lot of people find a lot of joy in customizing and personalizing the grips on their handlebars, or maybe they just wanna get a more comfortable grip to use. For our twist throttle, the twist throttle itself is the grip. And while we do sell a matching grip from the opposite side, that kind of locks you into a specific look. And if you want to have a different look with your grips, either you're going to have to throw that idea away or you're going to have to have Mitch matched handlebars. If that's an issue for you, this maybe isn't the throttle for you. But those are kind of the only big flags that I can think of for this throttle. Now, like I said, all of these are built for different riders. And it's easy for me to run down some of the physical pros and cons with these throttles 
but it's hard for me to do justice how they actually feel. If you're totally fine with your finger dexterity, then the finger throttle is going to be best for you. If you want something where you're pushing down with your thumb more than anything else, then the thumb throttle is going to be for you. And if you've got bad hand and fingers in general and you want something for your thrist, maybe you're an older rider, then the twist throttle is going to be for you. And it's hard for me to really show that in a video. In all honesty, the best advice I can give you to try to figure out whether these throttles are best for you is to tell you to go out and find somebody that also rides, find a family member that maybe has their own scooter, and test out these other throttle types. Getting your actual hands on these and testing them out for yourself is going to be the only way you can truly decide which one of them is best for you. These come down to comfort at the end of the day, and while there's small pros and cons on each one, I think they're pretty negligible. With that being said, I think I'm gonna go ahead and end the video here today. If you've made it all the way to the end of this video, I'm actually really curious what throttle you use and why you specifically use that. If you have any ideas for other videos you'd like to see me do, other discussion topics, by all means, let me know about those as well, and I'll see what I can do to get to those ideas. As always, thank you all so much for watching. I hope that this video helps, and I hope you enjoy your ride.